Good morning. I don't know, I think I'm here. I had to wait on my technical advisor, my beautiful helper that God has supplied me with to make sure I'm here at the right place this morning. I don't want to have that confusion I had last week. Yep. Is that right? Huh? I can't hear you. Oh. Our three, our three or four most famous words in this house is I can't hear you. So, most used words in the English language around here. I'm sitting here waiting. Give a little dab of time. People who want to see Lisa. Funk. So Lisa found me wherever I'm at. Anyway, this is another day the Lord's made. And regardless of what it's like outside, no matter, no matter what it's like inside the home, this is a day the Lord's made and we're going to rejoice and be glad in it. Who knows, we have plenty of things that come against us. Today's the day the Lord's made. You're on right. And I'm going to begin with a prayer. And Lord Jesus, we're just so grateful for today. We're so grateful for the way that you're here with us. And you know, as Jesus told us, when he, the disciples asked him how to pray, and he gave us our famous Lord's Prayer. You know, Lord, give us this day our daily bread. And each day is a new day. And each day is a new day the Lord gives us. And he gives us everything that we need to sustain ourselves. To sustain the words to give us. Our food. Our shelter. He provides for us each and everything that we need. Each and every day. And Lord, we're so grateful for all you do. And I ask that your words flow through me. Not my words, but your words, Lord. And that... These ear, that these words fall on open ears. And as Jesus said, let those who have ears, let them hear. And those who have eyes, let them see. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Amen. Uh, I'm going to start with First Peter chapter 5. And I'm going to start in verse 6. It says, Therefore humble yourselves under the mighty hand of God, so that he may exalt you at the proper time, having cast all your anxiety on him, because he cares about you. Be of sober spirit and be on the alert. Your adversary, the devil, prowls like a roaring lion, seeking someone to devour so resist him firm in your faith, knowing that all these same experiences of suffering are being accomplished by you, your brothers and sisters who are in the world. After you have suffered for a little while, the God of all grace, who called you to his eternal glory in Jesus, will himself perfect, confirm, strengthen, and establish you. To him be dominion forever and ever. Amen. You know, start with a you know so therefore humble ourselves to the mighty hand of God you know it's and he'll exalt us at the proper time you know we were all born for today he raised up Abraham for the time of Abraham God raised up Moses for the time of Moses he raised up John the Baptist for the time of John the Baptist but he's raised each and every one of us up for this time today. And, you know, with a, and I'm going to go on here and, you know, with a nature lesson. It talks about our adversary, the devil, prowls around like a roaring lion, seeking someone to devour. You know, and a big part of the time we look at the devil as one lion. 
But actually, truthfully, the way things work in Africa and places where the lions live, you know, the lions, they work together. There's not just one lion. You may hear one lion, but you have to watch for the lion that's coming up behind you. The one that's out here roaring and making all of the noise, that's just the, the distraction. The one that's gonna get you is the one that's coming up behind you. And in the villages and so forth, the people have gotten smart to the lion, and that's the way we should be too against the devil. We need to be smart. You know, our, it says in Hosea, my people are perishing from the lack of knowledge. And that lack of knowledge that's taken us and having us consumed by the lions is because we don't recognize the enemy and we don't recognize his tactics. You know, it's like I said last week, you know, we know his schemes. And we need to know his schemes and the way he comes and attacks us. But in Africa and places, they have watchmen placed around the village at night. Not just one watchman out here that's focused on this one roaring lion. There are watchmen scattered around the village. There are watchmen scattered around the crowds where they keep their cattle and their livestock at night to protect them from the lion. And uh, when everyone is focused on this one roaring lion, the other lions, they always, even the young male lions, when they leave the pride, when they leave the group, they never leave alone. They always leave in two or three of them at a time. And the reason why is because that is the way that they hunt. One is a distraction, whereas the others are the ones sneaking up behind. And so that's what I'm going to talk about mostly is distractions. Now, I'm a good old southern country boy, raised up here in the south. And, you know, we're in this woke society now where everything is just wrong. No matter what it is, well, all this stuff is distraction. And you know, years ago, several few years ago, a young man went into a church and killed. Uh, and it was a black church, and he killed the people in the church. And then all of a sudden, a photograph surfaced inside his bedroom with a picture of the Confederate flag on the wall. And the next thing you know, everybody is all this uproar over this Confederate flag. We got to do away with the Confederate flag. Get rid of the Confederate flag. All of this distraction on this focus on this Confederate flag. Next thing you know, there's just the next thing being brought out in the open and get rid of this and get rid of that. That was just the, that was what that agenda was, was just to keep eliminating and eliminating and eliminating history in our lives. But yet then, what the Holy Spirit came to revealed to me during all that. I got all excited and I was all up in an uproar over it too. But then the Holy Spirit got me one day and he told me, he said, here you are focused on this flag, this issue, this care of the world. And But in the process of being focused on this, you're not doing anything of bringing people into my kingdom. You're not sharing the gospel of the kingdom of heaven. You are focused on something of this world, but not the kingdom of heaven and expanding it. Now, right then and there, that was when I said, yeah, I agree. Thank you, Spirit, for letting me know this. But, and that's where we place our focuses. And today, man, we got all kinds of distractions. We got tons of roaring lions out here. And a lot of it is in the political realm. I mean, for instance, let's look at the, the border crisis. Here we are, have, we're all focused on all of these people coming across the border. And they're going to be living off in the government. And where is all this money going to come from to feed these people? And then we're all worried and upset that they're going to increase our taxes and they're going to do all of this stuff so we can support all these people flooding across the border. Now, I don't know where the government gets the money, but the government has an inner supply of money and they can take care of these people. Like I said, there are world powers throughout the world that have more money than the United States government. And they're the ones who are feeding this bringing crisis and crisis and crisis upon the nation. 
But where are we at as believers in Christ? Where are we at as people who live in within the kingdom and expand in the kingdom? Here we are sitting here being distracted by all of these people coming across the border and focusing on who's going to take care of them and how it's going to affect us. But as a church, what we should be doing is focusing on all of the spiritual, the spirits that are coming across that border. There have been, you know, here a month or two ago, there was a big, huge increase of people from Haiti coming across the border. All right. What is the big major religion in Haiti? Voodoo, black magic. Have we ever thought about the, the, the voodoo priests and priestesses that are coming across the border to expand these demonic religions in this world? Have we thought about all of the people coming from Central and South America, uh, I mean Central America, Mexico, the islands, and bringing their Santeria into the United States, their practices? And you know, all of these religions, voodoo, came out of the Catholic Church. It's a mixture of Catholicism, and it is a mixture of African black magic. Santeria, the same thing. It, come, it branched out of the Catholic Church as a mixture of Catholicism and magic. And these things are now that's where we should be focused at. We should be focused in the spiritual in the spiritual things that are coming across the border, not the people. And as a church, we're neglecting this. We're not seeing this. That's not where our focus is. But yet, this is where our focus should be. You know, they said that the gates of hell will not prevail against... Jesus said the gates of hell will not prevail against the church. And we have to stand up to the gates. The gates of hell. Gate, a gate is a defensive weapon. It is a weapon and it is defensive. And it is us who need to, should be as believers in Christ, as walking in the kingdom. It is the kingdom of, we're at war. We have a kingdom of darkness and we have the kingdom of heaven. And we're at war with the kingdom of darkness in many different ways. They have many different special forces. But yet we have one kingdom and we are together and we stand together and <clears throat> it's us as the kingdom that are, should be forcing the gates of hell to stay closed instead of letting all of these evil all these evil spirits and so forth come out and then expand into our well-being and There's so much ways that we as the church have dropped the ball. And I mean, it don't take much. You look around the church today. We have word of faith. We have all kinds of new age, Eastern mysticism. It's become part of common life, common everyday life of the church. And there's only one way to the Father. There's only one way to be a part of the kingdom of heaven. And that is through Jesus Christ and the finished work that he did on the cross and then the new work, the new life that he brought us by walking out of that grave and handing us the keys to the kingdom of heaven. You know, with the keys, we close the door to all evil, but then again, we are to be open in the door and bringing others in. And we use these keys. We use these keys through, through, through deliverance. We use these keys through sharing the gospel, speaking the words of Jesus as we go throughout our life. We use these keys to bring people into his kingdom. And we have the keys right here in front of us in red letters, black letters, on white pages, white pieces of paper. We have the keys right here before us all the time. And so many people are now, in the, with this new age mysticism that's coming to the church, the Bible is set aside. They just don't even read the Bible. You know, it's like the original lie there in the garden. You can become God. And you are as God. 
And now everyone is looking at this God within themselves. And they're awakening this God and they're living this God. And you, you can't judge this other person because this person is on their own walk with God. You're on your walk, but they're on their walk. And they're walking with God in their way. So, you know, you can't judge them. Jesus said we'll know them by the fruits. Jesus said that every tree that don't bear fruit is dead and needs to be cut down and thrown into the fire. But yet, we are, and, you know, we're always looking for an easy way. I have someone from England years ago who told me, said, you Americans are the world's worst about wanting to take a pill to fix everything wrong with you. Except for we don't go back and we don't look at the the cure. We don't look at the healing. You know, pills, they only create, they only take care of the symptoms of what is wrong. They never heal. I haven't found a pill yet that heals anybody of anything. They treat symptoms, but they never heal it. And there's only one true healing, and that comes through the stripe that Jesus bore on his body for our healing. And yet, here we are in the church. We have, you walk into a church, someone begins to manifest a demon. So what do we try to do? What do they try to do? Uh, we're going to cancel that, to counsel that demon out. It don't work that way. The council, council never has gotten rid of a demon. And I think I said here a few weeks ago, psychology, that is nothing but the enemy's version of deliverance. It don't do anything. It don't get rid of the demon. It just kind of pacifies the person in order to live and to continue playing on with their demon. You know, everybody, the old expression, you know, hell, everybody has to fight their own demons. Well, yeah, in a way that's true. But then again, to keep, why just keep constantly fighting and fighting and fighting these demons? Why not do as Jesus did and just walk up and cast that demon out of the person right up then and there? That's what Jesus did. So why do we not do that? Why do we not let them go out here and wrestle with their own demons? I mean, why do we, why do, we do that? Why don't we just take the authority of heaven, the kingdom that we're living in, and cast the demon out of the person? You know, Paul, he was walking along, and here comes this little girl, full of the spirit of Python. Everything she was saying was right. These are men of the most high God. She wasn't lying a bit. But yet, Paul got greatly annoyed. And finally, he just turned around and had enough. And he cast that demon out of her. And Jesus walked into the temple. And the, the man standing there and the demon said, Son of, God, Son of God, what do you have to do with us? It's not time. And Jesus cast the demons out of the man and set him free. And that's where we should have. Jesus had compassion upon the people. And that's where, and he exercised this compassion. You know, there was no deliverance. There was very little. There were people, there were healers in the day, but then they did the healing. I mean, it's like with today, we have Reiki, you know, in the new age of Reiki healing. There's all kinds of different forms of healing. But then one thing, uh, people who have even been in Reiki and different things of different forms of healing of the occult, and New Ageism always say that they may heal someone of what is wrong with them at that time. But then, in months or a year or two later, all of a sudden they have problems. They have diseases. They have uh, infirmities that are worse than what they had to begin with. When Jesus casts out the demon out of anyone and healing came they were healed totally and completely there was no new disease no new anything ever came upon these people they were totally and completely healed and here Jesus given us the same authority and as you know as 
I believe it was last week, I said, you know, the word Christian. It come because the people were really living and walking and living as the way of Christ. And that's what we're to do. We are to be Christ to this world. We're to be the light to this dark world. And it is us who instead of being distracted and getting on this bandwagon and that bandwagon and getting on these different bandwagons and being tossed about like the waves of the sea, it is us to stand on the solid foundation of Jesus. And it is us who go throughout this land and we share the gospel. We are to baptize people and disciple them and cast out demons and heal the sick. And no matter what this world brings against us, you know, I remember years and years ago when I first came to the Lord, man, I opened up the book of Peter and I got to seeing him talking about suffering for Christ and suffering for this and suffering and suffering and suffering. Man, immediately I said, whoa, I don't want no part of that. I don't like that part of the Bible. I'm going to skip over this. I really did. I actually did. When he got to talking about suffering for Christ, I mean, when he got to talking about all the suffering that we would go through, uh, no, 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 I didn't want that part. And what did I do? I skipped over it. And that's a lot of what's happening within this gospel today. That's why I'm wanting us as UCC, the Lord is wanting us as UCC, to live within the full of the gospel. Even the parts that are painful to our flesh, even the parts of it that go against everything within our soul. We are to live in the fullness of Christ. Jesus said the world said that they hated me before they hated you. And you will suffer for my namesake. But yet, we need, this is why we are. We need to be standing in the truth of Christ. We need to be expanding this kingdom regardless of what, regardless of the pain that it brings to our bodies, regardless of the, the pain that it, the stripping in our souls of, of, of our emotions. We need to keep our eyes focused upon Jesus. You know, Peter, Jesus was walking on the water. Peter walked out onto the water with him. But as soon as he took his eyes off of Jesus, man, down he went. And we need to keep our eyes focused on Jesus because he is the way and the truth and the life. And there's no one that's going to get to the Father except through him. You know, there Paul wrote to Timothy and he said, keep up the good fight of faith. Now, I've watched these guys. I mean, I know WWE and all that. That's just a whole great big bunch of put on and acting and so forth. And I've seen these guys just really just getting beat down to nothing. And then all of a sudden, here they get a second win, and man, they are up. And the next thing you know, the tide turns, and they end up winning that match. You know, I've watched boxing matches. And, you know, going on there for a while, and man, one guy is taking licks and taking licks. But then all of a sudden, he catches that a second win, and he ends up winning the fight, you know. Well, that's the way we should be in our faith. And our faith is what leads us. Our faith in Jesus. Our faith in every word that he spoke is true and comes to pass through us. If Jesus suffered, believe me, we're going to suffer. And, the, and this world and this government, I mean, the one good thing about this government is, is we have a boat. Now, whether that boat makes a difference or not, but at least we have the, the uh, ease within ourselves that we voted for the right thing, for what was right. And whether everybody else chooses Jesus or they choose Barabbas, that's the way it was with on those days they chose Barabbas over Jesus so therefore because of that decision from that day on you know Israel you know they lived with Barabbas instead of Jesus but yet there was still a, a group there were there was 120 in that upper room when that 
when the Holy Spirit and tongues of fire came down upon them, and they went out into the streets. And from that hundred, for just from that one sermon, that one morning, that first sermon ever recorded of a Christian from Peter, from that one sermon, it was over three thousand accepted the gospel and became followers of Christ. So it can change. It changes all the time. And the reason it changes is because you can be as Peter. God has given you this, Jesus has given you the ability as a disciple of his to be as Peter and to preach the good news of the kingdom and bring people inside this kingdom. Not distracted by the world. Peter and John, they had they got called up time and time again before the Sanhedrin. But yet, even though that they suffered hardships, Paul suffered hardship after hardship. As saying that Paul, man, he was a great guy. One thing I like about Paul was everywhere he went, there was a riot. <laughs> he never did. <clears throat> he never did go in there and preach this little gospel of peace of Oh, everybody just love everybody. Everybody just love everything. No, oh, Paul went into a place and said, you guys are acting like a bunch of fools. You need to get yourself together. And he's even talking to the people in the churches. Not just the Jewish people, but he was talking to the people in the churches that were already established. You guys are acting like a bunch of fools. Get back. Get to the gospel. Get back to the God Almighty who created you, who created all of these things. But you do so through his son, Jesus. Now, and he put down their gods. And the next thing you know, man, all hell's breaking loose, riot after riot after riot. And then he would get away. But then again, after he left, the word was there. And there were more people who held to that truth. And churches were established in places where he went. But... <coughs> And that's the way it should be with us. We don't need to worry about, yeah, it, there, we need to be aware of what's happening in Washington. But yet we don't need to be as zealot against Washington. We don't need, we need to have our focus on the kingdom of heaven. And Jesus, you know, back during that time, they were wanting a king to come, the Messiah to come, and take him away from all of the Roman oppression. Jesus had very little to say about Rome. Jesus said, yes, you give unto Caesar what is Caesar's, but give to God what is God. You know, Jesus spent all of his time and his focus when he was against anything, as far as his being against, was the people who were misleading and taking advantage of the people in the church. Jesus, his, what upset him the most of everything was the, the rulers in the church. And Jesus did what he did to bring people out from under all of that load of lawfulness, religion, and he exposed it. And Jesus was pretty brave about it. I mean, he wasn't afraid to call them a bunch of vipers. He wasn't afraid to call them sons of the devil. And we shouldn't either. We need to stand firm in our faith. And we need to continue to share the gospel and to preach the gospel. Regardless. And that's where our attention should be. Not these distractions in the world. Not this roaring lion when we have the other lions sneaking up behind us. But we should be focused on the King of Kings and Lord of Lords. I was sitting out here this morning and something that kind of, you know, we have princes and powers and principalities. And it refers to the only thing it really mentions of the enemy is being the the kingdom of this world. But, you know, nowhere of all of these evil spirits, they don't really talk about them as being kings. 
Nowhere does it say anything about an evil spirit being a Lord. But yet, it says that Jesus is King of Kings and Lord of Lords. Jesus is the only Lord and Jesus is the only King. We may have worldly leaders here that what they call kings and queens and princes in other places here, you know, we have our president and so forth, but other places, yeah, they have king worldly leaders. They had kings for worldly leaders back then. They didn't have presidents or prime ministers, they had kings. But Jesus is king over them kings. And Jesus is Lord over everything. Satan is not a Lord. Satan is a prince, a power. But he's not a, not a Lord. Now his followers call him Lord, but he's not. Jesus is the Lord and the one and only Lord. He's the only Lord ever mentioned in the Bible. I found that it obsessed with something. It just lifted me up this morning when I thought about it. <laughs> and I don't know. You know, for God's not given us a spirit of fear, but a power and of love and of discipline. Some translations say a sound mind. discipline and it's not being tossed about and when we're tossed about by every wave of the sea we're not being disciplined we're not going with the current and the only current we need to be following and going with is the current of the kingdom of heaven we don't need to be these riptide currents that off to the side that will carry you back out to sea that's what happens when you get in these waves you're catching in that riptide and it'll carry you back out. We need to stay in the current of Jesus that goes, it's like out here in the Pacific Ocean, or in the oceans, the sailors learn these currents. And if you stayed in this current, it would take you from Europe to America, from America to Japan when you stay in this. And that's where we need to, we need to stay in this current this current of the kingdom of heaven. Because one of these days, and this is a very narrow path to stay in these currents in the sea. I mean, if you get off over to the side and you get into the wrong current, they're saying, you know, you're going backwards. But if we stay in this straight and narrow current, we will reach our destination. And our destination is where our true citizenship is, and that is in heaven. And there are gonna be waves tall waves coming but yet if we're in this current and if we're in with Jesus within the kingdom and we're headed to our destination which is our final home these waves are not going to come and tump us over unless we allow them uh, I guess the words this it's like last week I uh, had this passage about 1 Peter 5 written down to speak about well in the last week the words just kind of like I speak till the words stop and when the words stop I'm not going to add my part to it now nah, so I didn't bring it up last week that's why I started decided to begin with it this week so here I am now. I'm at a point now where my words have stopped. It's not about me. It's not how much I can say. I want every word to be a word of the Lord. So that it's not about me. It's about Him. I'm going to submit to the Holy Spirit and speak what He says. And when He says it's time to be quiet, it's time to be quiet. And. I want to say that I really do hope that everyone has a good day today. And this is the day the Lord's made. And let's keep our focus on the straight and narrow path. 
that leads to the straight and narrow gate, I mean, to the narrow gate. Because wide is the gate to hell, narrow is the gate to hell. And we need to stay on that path and not look to the left and not look to the right, but keep our focus. Now, uh, now I ride a motorcycle, no doubt about that. And I saw someone one time, they said something about if wherever your eyes are focused, that motorcycle is going to go to where you're looking at and focusing. It'll always, when you're ready, if you've got your eyes focused and you're looking around this curve, that motorcycle will automatically make that curve. And so I heard that and I, I had to put that to the test. I got out one day on a ride. I said, all right, I'm fixing to test that theory. And Sure enough, I set my focus off to the side of the road. I mean, I const I mean, I sat there and I dwelt on a certain object, a sign, something further up the road in front of me, and that's where I was had my focus. And it was kind of a bit of a curve right there. And sure enough, the closer I got to that sign or whatever it was I was focused on, next thing I know, I crossed the center line. I was headed right straight to that. Even though the road curved, and I should have had my focus on that curve in the road, I let, that my, it was automatically, I was making it, that bike go towards where I was focused. And that's where we need to be in our focus here with the kingdom of heaven, is we need to be focused on that narrow gate. We don't need to focus on that wide gate. We need to focus on the narrow gate. And not only do we need to focus on that in our lives, because when we focus on that, you know, Jesus said, uh, oh my goodness, seek first the kingdom of God and all of its righteousness. Then all these things will be added unto you. When we focus in our, and we are seeking the kingdom of heaven, all these things will be added to us. But not only are these things added to us, these things are added to all of the people that we come in contact with. And then they, too, are able to walk the narrow path and enter through the narrow gate. And Lord Jesus, I'm so thankful for today. I'm so grateful for all that you have done. I thank you for these words. And Lord, I know that there's somebody that needed to hear this message today. And Lord, I'm so thankful that you have opened their ears so that they could hear. And thank you for your Holy Spirit, and I invite the Holy Spirit to come into everyone's life who have accepted you, Jesus, as the way, the truth, and the life, and the only way to our Father, the creator of all things. And Lord, too, I want to bind up and cast out these spirits of distraction, these different distractions that come to us. We need to take everything captive. Every thought we are told to take captive. And if, it's a spirit, and if it's a thought entered into our mind through a distracting spirit, we take these thoughts captive and we strike them down and cast them out. In Jesus' mighty name, and we pray, and amen. All right, I love you guys. Next week, and who knows, something may come up throughout the week, and there I'll be. But I love you guys. God bless, and enjoy the rest of your day. And remember, every day is the day of the Lord. And every day we find our rest in Jesus. And every single day is a day to keep holy. God bless you all.